welcome to Gerba, the paradise island. It was definitely an experience. Molly is the only one. Crazy enough. Two, one. It's like an abandoned resort with these sand dunes. Cheers. Saha. Good morning and welcome back to Tunisia and welcome to Gerba, the paradise island here in the very south of Tunisia. This is actually the largest island in North Africa and something I didn't even know existed. But to get here, it was quite quite a journey. You can actually fly here directly from Tunis on specific days. But the last time you would have seen us, we were in Seuss and we asked a lot of people, a lot of people at our hotel in Seuss, how to get from Seuss to Gerba. Nobody seems to know because a lot of the people don't use public transport. They said maybe a train. All trains have been cancelled. So they then said try and get a Luage. So we headed back to our favorite bus station. Good morning from what is becoming our favorite bus station in the whole world. We are back at Seuss's Luage station and today we have around a seven hour journey to the very south to an island called Gerba and we have to get two Luages. One to Gabez and then from Gabez to Gerba. So it's gonna be fun. Luage number one for three and a half hours. Welcome to rural Tunisia, we are somewhere in between Seuss and Gabez in a tiny little village. Not many are Westerner. It's a bit through here. Um, I mean, life in Tunisia is tough, and when you come through villages like this, you especially, especially notice it. This is where we've stopped. Cafe, restaurant, Sultan. Tunisia's finest dining establishment. Not sure if I am gonna grab anything to eat. I think we're only 45 minutes away from Gab's, Gab's. Well, everyone here, we are, we are a tourist attraction. Right? We are, literally every car that drives past is like, what are these two doing right here? We were given a trial at Blinkist, which is an educational app that condenses key information from popular non-fiction books and podcasts. To be honest, we, <laughs> we're not big readers. That was literally our first thought. And we were like, how would this help two full-time travelers? However, it has been incredibly helpful. They have a huge variety of content, which is all actually bite-sized. So you don't have to spend hours reading through a book or listening to a podcast. 15 minutes is all it takes. Blinkist is actually one of those things that can be used anywhere and everywhere. You can use it whilst at the gym, you can use it whilst you're on a break at work, and one of our favorite things is that it can actually be used on the road. We picked a couple of titles such as Build for Tomorrow. Uh, essentially, it is broadening our skills in adapting and future proofing our career, which is definitely something that we really need some help with. <laughs> Blinkist can help give you like a roadmap to becoming a better version of yourself. And I truly believe that 2023 is the year for us all to become the person that we'd like to be. For me, I would definitely like to be more driven, more motivated. They also have the new Blinkist Connect feature, which when you are on the premium plan, actually allows you to invite a second account to join your plan. You can actually get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Make sure you start your seven day free trial by using the link in the description. Thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring today's video and for literally broadening our horizons. And it took us to Gabez. We're a bit of a local spectacle right now because I feel like we're the only foreigners in this Luage station in Gabez, the only ones heading to Gerba. Oh, this is, this is gonna be fun. The good news is, is that the van is here and we have our tickets and I think we are waiting for more people. This could be a long wait. Change of plan. We've been waiting for almost an hour and we've been told that with the Luages you can actually buy other tickets for the seats and you can get taken. So we're, there's four of us so we're all riding in luxury and it's still probably like a tenth cheaper than getting a taxi all the way from here 
to Jerba. I'm gonna sleep. There was then a ferry crossing. We are so almost there. After a two hour drive, we have made it to the ferry port. There is a bridge that gets you across onto the island of Jerba, but that is another hour's drive. Oh, I hope this queue isn't too long. This day just keeps getting longer and longer. I think we're in hour eight now. We have an hour until the ferry leaves. Hopefully. And then that is we in should broken be, French. Yeah, in broken French, and then we should be in Java. We're nearly there. We are nearly there. This is the last leg, almost the last leg of the journey. I think it's like a 10 minute ferry across. We are now in hour nine. And eventually we made it. Cheers. Cheers, hour 10, and we've made it. I cannot believe it took us 10 hours. Two taxis, two luages, one ferry, but we have made it to the Radisson Blue here in Jerba. Get me in this bed. Let's just say Tunisian public transport probably isn't the best, but it was an adventure. It took almost 10 hours, but we have made it to this paradise island that isn't far, really, from the Libyan border. And we have checked into the Radisson Blue. This place is lovely and it starts at around 70 pounds a night. I cannot believe the prices. Um, we'll show you where we're staying, but today I think is gonna be a resort day. There wasn't gonna be a resort day, but then we got here and we just saw how nice it is. And some have claimed that this is known as possibly the best hotel in Tunisia. It's, it's gonna be a fun day after 10 hours, two buses, two taxis, and a ferry. Good morning. Good morning. Have you recovered from your, your 10 hour experience? You were basically a co-pilot yesterday. I was up in the front seat with the driver, speaking broken French, broken English. Um, they had the football on. It was definitely an experience, one I would recommend to anyone that was traveling Tunisia, as difficult as it may be, but I don't care what anyone says, you 100% need somewhere clean, modern, and nice to stay after a day like that. I was just exhausted. Um, when we arrived, we got welcome cocktails, we got sushi. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. This is needed after a 10 hour journey. I have got a Tunisian cocktail. It's Tunisian red wine with fruit. We've got a guy on the sacks behind us, we've got some sushi, this is perfect. There's literally a sushi stand at the reception where you can get your own sushi, it is so cool and I have a vegetarian one I think, here goes. That is unbelievable. It was all very fancy um, and definitely needed. I'll give you a room tour. So as Matt said, this is right now around 79 euros per night with your breakfast, which I think is amazing. So, huge bed. And I love this. They have the Scandinavian way of doing duvets, which is where you have two I separate hate sharing duvets. duvets. I love having my own duvet. So good. And I think this is very cosy in here. You have your sofa. We have a TV, a uh, smart TV, very handy, chair. Through there is the separate toilet and bathroom. And then, are you ready? Welcome to the view. Wow, it's amazing. We have pool view, absolutely stunning. We have sea view, beach view, um, and great weather. Welcome to Jerba. Can we just appreciate the size of this pool? It's absolutely massive. first job of the day is breakfast. I am absolutely starving, but just look at where our room is located. We are basically in a little jungle. It's like a conservatory, you've got all the birds in here, and then there is our little jungle. This is the walkway to breakfast. How fancy. I want one of these lanterns for at home. I think they're so pretty. <laughs> This is great, you basically get everything in there. You get your warm stuff, you get your cold cuts, you get your healthy stuff, which I don't go near. <laughs> we don't go near any healthy stuff. So much for being healthy. My favorite thing about a breakfast station is the egg station. I th yeah, if you don't have an egg station, like, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it so wrong. <laughs> breakfast was very, very needed. We've actually booked ourselves in for a massage later on this afternoon. You need to make the most of massages in Tunisia. I think this will be like our third one. One, 
they're amazing and B the prices are very good probably for the price of one massage in the UK you could get 10 in a really fancy place like this in Tunisia but we're now gonna walk down to the pool it's 23 degrees it is December the December the I can't get my phone out it's stuck in my pocket It's December the 8th as I was filming and it's 23 degrees supposedly tomorrow it's 28 for 70 pounds a night I can't believe how grand this is this is unbelievably fancy grand and uh, I don't know if you can see but all the way through there is just a whole section of swimming pools I am actually going to dip my feet in and I might even possibly have a quick swim seeing as it is so warm outside today two towels please okay. thank you I should <laughs> This pool is honestly massive. I think there is even jacuzzis there, um, but I'm gonna be the only crazy person that goes in because I haven't swam in the pool yet, so. Are you going fully in? Oh, it's chilly. You gotta go down, ready? Three, <gasps> two, one. <gasps> oh my gosh. They say it's good for you. That is honestly so, so cold. I can see why no one's in here, but I think you, your body does a body does acclimatise. I think I'll let Molly go for a swim. There are actually loads of people around the pool, and Molly is the only one crazy enough to get in there. I've noticed actually there is a lot of French tourists here, especially in the hotel. But I believe the main international flight there is actually an international airport in Gerba is from Paris. I might be wrong. But at this time of the year, December, I can't find any from the UK, so you'd have to fly to Tunis and then Tunis to Gerba. Don't do the Lawash thing that we've done. Molly became a little bit of a spectacle there in the swimming pool for the French tourists. I think they thought she was a little bit crazy, but we are now walking down to the beach. The reason you come to Gerba, and I think there's actually one of the themed restaurants. I think there's a few themed restaurants at the hotels, and a pool bar but Gerba is known as like the desert island you're very close to the Sahara it's like the gateway to the Sahara so really the beach is everywhere it isn't just a sandy beach it's a sandy island the sand is actually so powdery very very fine almost like you're walking on marshmallows this is like part of our little private beach area and for some reason there's huge tractor marks there was a tractor here this morning there are some cabanas that look like they're closed we've got some lounges do we move from the pool to the beach and lounge around or do you actually, <gasps> whoa, see the sand is so soft that I'm falling through. It's Sahara sand. <laughs> it could be Sahara sand. It probably is. The sand is nice, but the seaweed right here definitely isn't. I don't know if it picks up very well in the camera, but there is a lot of seaweed being washed in. I'm not sure I would want to swim in that, but I think the way it works here in Gerba is obviously all the private beaches are attached to the public beach. You can see the public beach just past it. I was hoping to find some camels and horses. I've heard in Gerba on the beaches, it's a common theme to just see camels and horses running along while you're sunbathing or drinking your beer. Soon as you leave the private beach, it leads straight into the public beach. I think there's like a salt lake or a lake or something along there. Obviously you've still got the seaweed um, and the sea. And then down the end, there's like a, a unique- I don't know if it's like a, a mosque or something. We need to go and check it out. Yeah, I don't think you can see it on the camera. Made it after a 20 minute walk to what's actually probably like an old abandoned resort, but it's much, much clearer down here. Yeah, I mean, the sea goes out a little bit further here. The tide's out, but there is no seaweed. The sea looks very clean, very blue. The sand is clean. Um, and we're at an abandoned, it's like an abandoned resort with these sand dunes, palm trees. It's very strange. It's a really weird landscape. You can see it's completely wasted away. Whatever used to be here has definitely seen better days. And the water is so nice. I'm definitely not swimming in the sea. Cheers. Saha. That was actually quite a long walk. It was actually a really long walk. This is well deserved. We came into the beach bar here. I think it's called Blue White. Um, because everything's blue and white. <laughs> obviously, it's beautiful white on the beachfront. And for a bottle of 
Celtia's finest. Um, it's seven dinar, so that is just under two pounds. It's perfect. I wasn't sure, being further south, whether it would be different trying to find alcohol, but it seems the same. Yeah, it seems the same, and it's lovely on the beach. That bar was the perfect place to sit and have our beer, and it's definitely warm out there. I don't know if you can see, but it's I'm a little in the bit south red. In the north. It's definitely warmer in the south, but we've just come in. Our lobby is gorgeous. Behind me, you can see they have more of like the jungly feel, the oasis inside. They've kept a lot of the traditional Tunisian touches as well, so it just makes it look different to any other hotel I've seen so far. But this has to be my favorite part of the hotel there is a fully sized Irish bar Gerba Irish in the pub lobby. in the lobby I also love the fact they got Christmas decorations everywhere how cute is that I have actually never seen this in a hotel before look at it it's a full size normally you get like a little hotel bar but this is full size you would think you're in a pub or you've gone out to a real bar. It's so cool. Such a unique thing to have in a hotel as well. I am a tiny little bit obsessed it's with so this cool. place. I, I don't know if I'm being like a little bit over the top, but I generally haven't ever seen a bar like this in a hotel. You get like a lobby bar or a beach bar like we've got here, but a fully sized Irish bar. I presume a lot of the locals that are allowed to drink or have a cheeky drink without anyone knowing would come here, and even people that are on holiday and staying in other hotels would come. They've got the sport on, they've got huge screens. It's a nice change, isn't it? They got draft sell to, it would be rude not to have a draft sell to in here. That's 11, so less than, it's about two pounds 50 for a large draft beer. They've got a pool table, they've got food, which we're getting. It's obviously the typical Irish bar, burgers, pizzas. Had Thai. <laughs> so random. A bit random, Irish bars are random. Pizza, beer. Irish bar. You cannot go wrong. We're just um, extremely cheap dates, I think. <laughs> I love it in here though, because there's about a thousand different clocks, all different types of trinkets. There's like a London telephone box. I think mixed we're just very easily else. pleased. We're easily pleased, but I think something like this is really good. I'm not going to judge a pizza. I'm not going to say it's the best pizza ever, but it does smell very good and uh, it goes nicely with my Celtia. £11 for two pints of beer and a pizza. If you told me we could get that back in the UK, I would tell you you were crazy. But in Gerba, in a five-star hotel, you can get that. And the time is now three o'clock and it is getting closer for us to get our massage that we've booked in. But before we do that, we're checking out their salt water pool, which I think they have indoor and outdoor, which is good because the sun is shining and I don't know why I'm inside. Thank you very much. Hi, Shook. Hello. 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 Good, good, thank you. you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Could we get towels as well, please? Towels. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, that's lovely. We've been given our spa bag with our essentials and our genie slippers, which I absolutely love. And this is the salt water pool that you have access to all day before your massage or after your massage. And it has an amazing view of the sea, of the gardens. There's even like little curtain bits I like that, that you can go out. little curtain thing, you can just like swim through it and then you're outside. It's so cool. Supposedly, the saltwater pool is very good for recovery. I've noticed it's very good for floating. Um, and I don't know about exercise. They've got a lot of like exercise equipment. <laughs> I feel like swimming pools in hot countries are there to cool down, not to, uh, not to lift weights. I feel like my dinner, I'm absolutely covered in salt, but we've now been split up. Molly is having a massage downstairs, and I think I'm having mine. It's okay up here? Thank you. Thank you. Just through here? Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna enjoy this. I was extremely salty, now I am extremely oily. I've showered and I still can't get the oil from the massage off. I did try and film some bits of it, but it's just, it's just so awkward. You go in there, there's broken English, you're naked, the lady thinks you're trying to get like photos of your holiday. It just really isn't a good look, but it was great. We had a 50 minute full body massage. I am relaxed, changed, well, changed into the same. I'm wearing the same top as I wore earlier, but we are heading for dinner because there's also a buffet dinner at the hotel. And we've found that they have got a shisha bar. So it's dinner and then we are getting on the shisha tonight. I'm actually wearing 
my slippers from the massage. You have no etiquette. Out for dinner. <laughs> Just can't beat a buffet. You've got some brick, the Tunisian like spring roll type things. You've got some cottage pie, more pizza, deep fried vegetables. You've got everything going on here. And the best thing is we can eat as much as we like. Was this really necessary? No, but it looked too good. You're gonna have no room for shisha. I know. I'm not sure if shisha is the best idea after a huge buffet dinner and dessert. Um, it's a Tunisian digestive. <laughs> that's probably true actually, but this is only 40 dinar, so around 12 English pounds, and we went for a mix of like mint and fruit, so it could be a digestive, but here you go, I haven't done this for a long time. That was pathetic. <laughs> oh, it is minty. Minty and kind of like... Your breath will smell nice. Tastes like toothpaste mixed with like a fruit salad. It's actually very difficult to film. <coughs> I cough again because they've got the uh, the dark light in for the ambiance. There is actually the, what is the, the ambiance. There is the actual shisha bar in there, but it's very loud music. And I don't know if loud music goes. I don't know. Is shisha something that you have to chill or have something like if you're going out to liven yourself up? I, I don't think know. You chill. I don't know. But forty dinar, twelve pounds. It was worth it. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back to Jerba Island here in Tunisia. I don't know if you can hear that, but the weather has done a slight change for the worse. There was a little bit of thunder there. I'm praying that it blows over today because we do want to get out and explore. This video really wasn't going to be made like we didn't we didn't want to make this video. We didn't think we were going to make this video, um, but we really just wanted to show you what an experience in a resort on the island of Jerba is like and I think we showed it pretty well ending the day with shisha um, it really does make you cough I have a slight sore throat so definitely will not be doing that in a hurry but today when the weather blows over we will be heading out to explore the best that the island has to offer so we shall see you in the next one exploring Gerba